welcome to our weekly show, Let's Chat Bengaluru. I'm your host, Vidisha, and today we have with us Mr. Zahid H. Jawad. He is a senior journalist, a photographer, a publisher, and a writer. He is the man behind the first of its kind magazine on a single neighborhood. His magazine, Residence Watch, is a widely circulated free magazine distributed throughout HSR layout in Bengaluru. So here we are today to know more about his inspiration and purpose behind the Residence Watch. Good morning, Zai. Good morning, Jill. So, uh, we would like to know when did you think of publishing uh, such a magazine on a particular neighborhood and what was your inspiration or reason behind uh, such an idea? Okay. Uh, this started more than three years ago. Uh, my father has been part of the Resident Welfare Association for the last 10 years in HSR layout. Uh, was the secretary for Sector 3 Resident Welfare Association and then he became the joint secretary or uh, rather the secretary general for all the seven sectors put together in HSR layout called the Federation of HSR layout, Residence Welfare Association. So uh, he gave me the idea that he'd been a journalist for the last 20 years. So why don't you start something for HSR layout and uh, bridge the information gap? Because a lot of people in HSR layout are not from here. They're from outside. So people need to know what's happening in HSR layout, both commercially as well as uh, civic wise. So that's the, uh, that's the reason why it's Residence Watch. Uh, uh, came to be born uh, about exactly three years ago and uh, uh, since then uh, it's been a, a monthly magazine uh, free of cost and subsidized only by advertisements. Okay, so uh, why do you think a magazine was uh, exactly needed and how did you start it? Like it must have been difficult for you to just start a magazine free of cost and how did you get people to advertise for it and pay for the magazine? Yeah. Soon after my graduation, I got hired by a company who had seen my work uh, because before that I used to also be the guest editor of a neighborhood newspaper called Indra Nagar Times because I used to stay in Jiman Nagar at the time. So um, as the guest editor, it was a weekly newspaper, it was an eight-pager and uh, uh, the editor of the magazine who hired me later had seen this newspaper and uh, uh, at that time the resident editor of Times of India also had appreciated my efforts in the newspaper and all of that put together uh, he hired me and said, yeah, I need someone like that who has grassroots knowledge and uh, for my magazine because his magazine was to do with civic amenities in Bangalore. So it was called uh, Bangalore, uh, the Bangalore Monthly magazine. It was a lifestyle, India Today kind of size, huge magazine, uh, all color and it used to talk about all civic amenities and lifestyle story. Basically anything that you would really need to know about the city was all out there in the magazine. Uh, so that's when uh, the whole thing came about and uh, uh, that gave me the uh, experience because this magazine, uh, uh, it was called uh, Bangalore This Fortnight, it was a tourist tabloid and then we had the Bangalore Monthly which is a lifestyle magazine. So the lifestyle magazine and the tourist uh, guide that I used to work for the same company gave me the whole experience of how uh, the entire product can be monetized without pricing it. The Bangalore Monthly was priced. Uh, but the Bangalore this four times, which was a tourist guy, was not priced. It was only subsidized by advertisements. So the funda was very simple. We used to get ads from people and then the paid features, whether it's a write up or it's just a classified ad or a display ad, used to come in the magazine. The rest of the stuff was all paid for, the articles, like a restaurant review was paid for. So that's how we were keeping the magazine free of cost. Now the magazine would be of great use to the resident because it had num a number of free classifieds of all the important outlets in the city. So that is why the, a person used to pick it up and keep it for himself. So it was not a magazine that would uh, have a very short shelf life. If he had it, he would keep it until he would get the next issue. So that way, uh, uh, we had that experience of 20 years, which I brought to use now in this Residence Watch magazine. I said, hey, why don't we make something for the resident? We've been doing it for a tourist all the while. Now we can do it for a resident and do the same formula, where you have all the information that is needed for a resident. And we will also talk about all the civic amenities happening uh, in the country, in the city and through this uh, model neighborhood. So the idea was to make this the model neighborhood and say, hey, if we can do it here, we can do it anywhere in the other uh, neighborhoods and uh, perhaps take it all uh, over the country. Okay, and uh, do you have designated people writing these articles? Or do you allow freelancers or anybody who wants to be a part of it? Maybe he's not from HSR but has heard of it. So how do you go about uh, that or do you have some specifications that I cannot go beyond this page limit or yeah. Uh, something like that? Yeah, see what happens is that uh, the, the specifications are very simple, we need to be HSR focused. So we can't write generic articles 
about something that any general purpose magazine would anyway write about, like health. Mm. We don't need a health writer up here. Unless that person happens to be from HSR and he's a doctor in HSR and he has certain tips that not many people really offer, then it's good. Like, like for example, there is one guy who's a scientist in HSR and he says that walking and jogging is not really good for you. And he has his reasons. Okay, so uh, something of that nature, which is kind of disruptive, kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, reverses your thinking, and might be credible uh, if uh, a certain uh, organization takes it up and sees if it can be proved. Uh, you know, such things are definitely encouraged. But again, as I said, the only focus is it has to be someone who is a resident of HSR. Leader. Whatever he says, whatever he does, will connect with the other residents simply because we are all uh, you know global villages now. Nobody is anyway going to the center of the city to shop. They all shop right here in, neighbor, in the neighborhood. So, so they want all the doctors from the neighborhood. They don't want to go. They don't want to step out because of many reasons like traffic, and pollution, and uh, uh, there's no time for anything. So they want to do everything in double quick time. Do you plan to extend it to other areas in Bangalore because you think it is necessary for every neighborhood to have such a magazine? And uh, do you extend to it, or do you want others? Uh, to do it in collaboration with you or okay. like I said earlier, uh, the idea is that uh, people get inspired by it so much that they uh, take it to their own neighborhoods, their own cities and make it happen. Uh, I wanted to do it, uh, but the problem is marketing. We need good marketing uh, people to take it to other neighborhoods and uh, I'm finding that uh, major shortage uh, in this arena uh, because it's, a, it's kind of a uh, giving back to society effort. So not everyone is enthused by it, although there is uh, a lot of commercial uh, component to it if they really work hard and make it happen. Because uh, today I have noticed lots of people, uh, I'm talking about corporates, who like to advertise in a neighborhood community specific uh, publication rather than a publication which is very general in nature. Uh, because today people are moving away from all the generic things and getting more specific. So people are not bothered about what's happening on NGO, they want to know what's happening in their own neighborhood on their main thoroughfare. So from that standpoint, I've seen corporates not giving advertisements to commercial generic magazines, but giving advertisements to people like us. So you will have advertisements from uh, Airtel, uh, Narayana Vidalaya, um, you know, Reliance, Mutual Fund. So those guys have come and advertise with us and they're not advertised with a generic uh, general purpose magazine, which is meant for the entire city. So from that standpoint, if you look at it commercially, it makes more sense to go community based and neighborhood based because it's very simple it's like 10,000 copies being circulated across the city will, will have less impact compared to the same 10,000 copies only circulated in, in the HSR layout so uh, it makes commercial sense and I feel that anybody should be able to uh, replicate this effort in their own neighborhood I cannot do it because of uh, uh, talent shortage uh, and I want to continue my effort at least in my neighborhood because this is where I stay and I know exactly what is wrong and what is right in the neighborhood. So I can be the reporter, the editor, uh, the uh, you know the marketing guy uh, who can do it all on uh, all in one shot. But it cannot be replicated in other cities because I'm not there. I cannot replicate in another neighborhood because I'm not staying there. So I wouldn't know what is really ailing that particular neighborhood. So people who are in those neighborhoods, I think they should be able to uh, replicate this effort and make it out. Because then otherwise uh, it will become very difficult for you to convey the news first. Because at the end of it, the information has to be accurate. And you need to have your ears to the ground. So if I'm staying here and if I'm remotely operating uh, on some neighborhood in some other place, it's going to be very difficult for me to give the kind of authenticity that is required in the magazine. Thank you so much, uh, Zahid, and it's nice you. to have you on our show. Uh, see you next week with one more guest, and uh, stay tuned.